Hi, I'm Michael McPadden from the Tango API team, and I'm here to give you more guidance about using Tango's Mobile Procurement API, often referred to as ModProc for short. In this video, I'll be telling you about the headers that you can pass with any request and how they are used by this API. Request headers are really just named value pairs containing information about the request, and many of them are a standard part of the HTTP protocol, passing on info describing such things as the user agent making the call and the date time of the request and so on. However, in this video, we'll focus on the custom headers that were created by Tango to help you better define your ApeMobProc API calls. With one exception, all these custom headers begin with the prefix in all capital letters, X hyphen TNGO hyphen. The only exception to this rule is the header for passing your client ID. The client ID is the unique identifier that Tango has provided to each API customer when they register to use the API. It must be passed with every API call as one part of the authentication process. The next header is the tenant header. This is a required header that is used to identify the specific tenant or client for which the API is being called. You'll want to set its value to the tenant code that was provided to you by Tango. In most cases, the user will probably only ever need to access the data for one company, so you will likely only ever have one tenant code. However, for users who have to access data from more than one company or, or organization, you will want to be sure that you're using the correct tenant code for each API call. Otherwise, you can get back data for one company when you're expecting it for another. We also have the hierarchy ID header. This header is used to identify the organizational hierarchy to be used for your API request. It's optional. When you don't pass it, the default hierarchy will be used. The next two headers are used for the same purpose, so only one of these two should be passed with a single request, the company employee ID and the employee ID. These headers allow us to make a request on behalf of another user. It is especially helpful when the service account is being used to make all of the API calls for an application, but yet the request is being made for the benefit for one specific employee. For example, say that your company offers its employees an application for ordering cell phones for themselves. The catalog from which they can choose devices and plans may have some restrictions based on organizational level. Now for security reasons, this application might be configured to only allow API requests to be made from a single service account. In this case, you could also pass a context employee ID or the context company employee ID header that is set to the employee ID for the end user placing the order. This will enable the API to restrict its response to include only the catalog items that this particular employee is authorized to order. I'll come back to the two remaining headers in the list, but first let me explain the subtle difference between the company employee ID and the employee ID. As I said, these two headers are mutually exclusive, so you only need to pass one of them depending on which type of ID you have available. The company employee ID header takes an employee ID that is assigned by the tenant or client and is configured as the company employee ID in the Tango source system. Examples of these IDs can include an employee's email address, uh, an employee badge number, or some other value that uniquely identifies the employee. This header is only used when the context employee ID header is not set. When neither header is set, the context will default to the authenticated user. The employee ID header takes the employee ID value that is assigned by Tango typically a GUID, since its value is generated by Tango is most trusted by the API. As such, when it is passed, it will be used, and the company employee ID, if passed, will be ignored. But before we move on, let me make just one quick note about security. Whenever you override the context and make the request on behalf of another user, it is important to make sure that the logged in user has access to all or more data than the overriding user account. So for example, say you want to deactivate the service account and you are active executing the call from a provisioner account with limited rights to make requests on behalf of lower level employees only. If you set the context employee ID header to the ID of a, a super administrator with global rights, the API will not allow you to deactivate the service of the company's president since the authenticated logged in user, the limited provisioner, is not authorized to do so. So just by setting the context to a user with greater rights won't grant you the ability to use those greater rights. It'll only allow you and restrict you to the rights that are allowed for the authenticated logged in user. So unless a user is authenticated, that's the maximum scope of rights that you would be granted. Now, going back to the last two headers that were on our list, these last two headers are available to assist with troubleshooting. Both are used to tag API calls, making it much easier to quickly locate related activity and server logs. 
all request and response activity that is logged for a single API call is tagged with both of these headers, assuming that they are both set. Furthermore, they can be set to whatever value you choose. Then, when you are troubleshooting, you can search the logs for your value and quickly find all the log entries that relate to your API call. Either header is useful for tagging log entries, but they can be especially useful when used together, but with different values to track a series of related API calls. The activity header can be used to tag multiple related calls with the same identifier, and different identifiers can be used for the correlation ID header in each individual API call in this related set to help us distinguish between each of those calls. For example, say you're using the API to present a user interface screen where the end user is presented with a list of plans that will work with their current device. To do so, we need to make two API calls, one to look up the user's device ID, and the second to get a list of plans using this device ID as a filter parameter. For both calls, we can set the context activity ID header with the same value, such as get plan list. We can also set the correlation ID headers, each with a call, uh, each call with a different identifier, such as get device ID and get compatible plans. Although you want to use IDs that are far more unique, possibly embedding a username and a date time in the string when you generate it. Okay, say an error occurred while loading this list, but you're not sure which call failed. If we search the logs for where we get the activity ID and find where it's set to get plan list, we will get all the events related to both calls. Then when we observe an error message appearing in the log entry for a call tagged get compatible plans, well, then we know that our second call is the one that failed. Having this ability to group related activity while simultaneously maintaining the ability to tag individual calls that comprise our grouping can be really helpful. Furthermore, Keep in mind that you can populate these headers with whatever unique identifying information might assist in your troubleshooting. Before we wrap up, I'll quickly show you where you can find these headers in our developer portal. Okay, let's expand the panel for any one of our endpoints by clicking the Get tab. If we scroll down right below the Authentication section, you'll see all of these headers that I just described. So there you have it. You now know about the custom request headers supported for all endpoints in the mobile procurement API, as well as how to effectively use them. I hope you found this video useful. For more information and tutorials on other topics, we recommend browsing the MobProc API video library at mobproc.tv and our documentation website at mobproc.info. That's all for now. Thanks for watching and have a great day.